Welcome to another edition of Your Health with MU Healthcare. And today joining me is Dr. Christelle Ilbudo. And I uh, want to thank you for your time today. Thank you. First of all, just tell a little bit about yourself, uh, where you're from, and uh, how long you've been with MU Healthcare. So um, I am originally from Benin, a country in West Africa. I did my medical school here in Omaha, Nebraska. I did my residency at Glennon, my fellowship at um, in Kansas City, and I um, I studied here about four years ago now as a pediatric infectious disease physician. Outstanding. Uh, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, mosquito and tick bites uh, today. Uh, we're going to do a two-part series with you, and we're going to talk about measles as well. Okay. But uh, it, let's talk a little bit about symptoms that, that folks should look out for in the summertime with uh, mosquitoes. So typically it is uh, a sting at the site of the bite that most people will have. Some people can get a reaction to the bite where it looks a little red, um, like an insect bite, bite, and that's that's the end of it. Some people, as they scratch it, they can get a little more of a bacterial inf- secondary bacterial infection where they get an actual boil or pimple at the site of the bite. Those are generally the symptoms that we see with uh, mosquito bites. Uh, what should folks do to protect themselves from those mosquito bites? So wearing um, insect repellent, especially if they're going to wooded area, um, uh, trails, um, parks, um, places where um, they're more likely to encounter those insects. Um, It is typically recommended to wear long sleeves, but again, with the summer, it's not always practical to wear long sleeve shirt and and pants, but um, wearing insect repellent is the next best thing that someone can do to protect against mosquitoes. So what are some of the uh, types of diseases that are caused by mosquito bites? The most common one that we see here is West Nile. Um, And West Nile virus is not very common in otherwise healthy people. We do see it more in people who are older, who have an immune system problem, or who have chronic illnesses, that they are the ones who tend to get the um, meningitis or the brain infection from it. With uh, the flooding recently, is this a a breeding ground for mosquitoes? Absolutely. Some mosquitoes only need very little water to breed. So I I often give it the example of old tires that are in the backyard or buckets that people leave out um, that could collect water. So if there's any water, some people do store water. Um, We recommend closing, um, having a tight um, uh, uh, top to uh, to those water containers that they have outside for drinking. Can people feel symptoms and feel sick from those mosquito bites? And and at what point should they seek medical treatment if they they start seeing some of these things? So I think after an insect bite or in general a mosquito bite in particular, if they see the big red pimple-like lesion that's painful, that's red, and they have fevers, they probably should seek care because that's more likely to be a bacterial infection. If they develop more generalized aches and pains, flu-like symptoms, you know, vomiting, diarrhea, nausea, um, headaches, then they definitely should seek care. Let's kind of switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, ticks and, and tick bites, if you will. Uh, you know, what, what are some of the, uh, the symptoms of tick bites uh, and some of the diseases that are caused by that? So tick bites, again, can be similar to mosquito bites where you get some induration and redness around the side of the tick bite. There are a few tick-borne illnesses that are common in Missouri, um, one of them being tularemia. Um, tularemia can be caused from, by more than ticks, but ticks are the most common way that people get it and usually cause inflammation of the node, of the lymph node. So they see you see swelling um, a, a, around the site where the bite was, lumps and bumps, and then redness at the side of the bite. Um, other tick-like illnesses are Rocky Mountain spotted fever, where people get fever, again, a flu-like illness. Some people have rash, uh, a rash with it. And then early chiosis is the other one that also can cause a flu-like illness. Um, typically, early chiosis and Rocky Mountain spotted fever happen about a week to two weeks after the bite. So some people don't necessarily remember being bitten by tick with those illnesses. But I always say in, in tick season, even if people don't specifically remember being bitten by a tick, if they get flu-like symptoms, fevers, rashes, they should seek care because it could be one of those. And those can be detrimental if we don't um, uh, diagnose them soon enough and treat them appropriately. 
I know this is one thing that I really want to know from you, too, is uh, about tick removal. There's a lot of, uh, you know, tales out there as to how to do it. Do you burn them off? Do you pull them off? Could you provide us with some advice on that today? The best way to remove ticks is by tweezers. And the reason is that the the, um, the bacteria actually lives at the pointy edge of the tick where they actually bite and they embed that, that part of the, the tick. So when the ticks are flickered off or pulled off, you can leave broken in that part that contains the bacteria and it doesn't prevent the infection. So removing the whole tick with those um, that embedded piece is really critical. And the best way to do that is using tweezers. Absolutely. Uh, Some methods to avoid uh, getting ticks while you're out in the woods or just outside in general. Again, insect repellent is, is really key. For children, we do recommend once they've been out and about in in a tick area to really check them thoroughly. Um, And adults to places that people tend to miss is the scalp or the hair area or even around the private area because those are not places that we typically check. So doing a very thorough check, especially in hairy places, is really recommended to look for ticks. Most certainly. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take a break, and we're going to bring you back again next week, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about measles, and uh, we'll, we'll talk more here on Your Health with MU Healthcare. It's on KXEO.